Dave here, how are you? Uh, I was just in another world for a second there. Today is the 2nd of December in Australia. I hope everyone is well and you've had a good week. Um, question for uh, people in Queensland. Terrible fires up there at the moment. And an interesting thing. We've noticed that uh, in where I live, whenever there's bad fires in California, which obviously is on the other side of the Pacific, we um, in in the Blue Mountains, we have a very wet summer. So I don't think it's going to work for Queensland, but I, I don't know how that works. It's just how it's been happening here. So I feel for you guys in Queensland because we've been through a couple of fires here and it's not a very nice thing. It's very scary, as a matter of fact. Anyway, I hope everyone is well. As I said, I hope you've had a great week and into it. I'm hoping the show is coming through fine. It should be. I've got a little green light down there. They're saying everything's great. Sound and audio is great. Thank you, Stephen. Ah, oh, Stephen. Now, you made comment. You asked about whether or not the Stanton Bench is available in the States. Yes, it is. We're already taking orders there. If you want to get in touch with me, there's a new email, which is dave at stantonbench.com.au. So for everyone who's interested, it's a great little unit. Um, dollars, if, you want to, if you're curious about the dollars, the thing comes as a full kit. I'm just doing it as one full kit, which is the top, the apron, the connecting piece, all six legs, T-tracks, and the closed cell cushion strip as well. It's $4.99 Australian, which works out to about $0.05 cents American. No. <laughs> no, US dollars, I think it's about 360 I do have a gentleman in the States who is producing for me. So he will produce and package and send out all around the country. And also, I think he's doing Canada as well. So if you're interested, there you go. Now, into what we're going to be doing here. The famous G6 IMUF sweepstake is back and it's international. So this week, I'll grab my pair. These are the G6. Now, they've got a little dust shroud across the top here as well. So it's a nice fit around your forehead. And these are a slightly stronger construction than the standard eye muffs. And one thing I noticed this morning, you can wear glasses on with it. And when you put them on, it's, I'll do it now. You pull it back on over your glasses to start. And then you can move your, the goggles around by adjusting on the side here. So you can move them between each ear muff. And here's the big thing. When I lean forward, Whoop, don't go look at my bald spot. When I lean forward, my glasses do not fall off or move. They are just touching the goggles, which is a huge thing. I don't know about some of you guys, but you know, if, you, if you're getting into an awkward position trying to look under uh, part of a bench or you, you're doing something and you're upside down almost, glasses tend to fall off. These are great. So there you go. And I could hardly hear anything while I was talking about. Very good sound protection. We are giving a pair away. And uh, George from IMUFS is always a good supporter of the channel, so uh, we'll look after him. Information, click the show more button below this image. If you're watching on a TV or on a smartphone, you might have to scroll down on the smartphone with a TV. You'll probably have to, um, I'm going to switch cameras so that we get the chat as well. There we go. If you're watching on a TV, you might have to, if you want to enter the competition, jump on a computer or something after the show or during the show, it doesn't matter, and look underneath, click that show more button, scroll down through all the other stuff. I've got their links and everything and find the competition. Uh, it's actually a sweepstake, not a competition. I'm going to do a quick read here. Um, there's a whole heap of stuff here. Uh, uh, Ian, all good. Good in New York from John. Uh, Stephen, awesome. Great. Ralph, good evening from Denmark. John, Five kits here in Canberra ready to go. Yes, yes. So when I did the Canberra show, Canberra Timber and Woodworking show, I took some with me. I took a heap with me, as a matter of fact. There's five left over there, and they're all different prices because they're, they're pardon me, they were my early start of doing the things. And some of them, I've actually got dominoes in. They're ready to just lock together and, and you know, others... Um, the, the insert hole may have been slightly larger than I would have liked. So I took that into consideration when I did the pricing. But you'll grab a bargain down there and they all work very well. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? Uh, need them, Dave? Uh, yeah, these are fantastic. The eye muffs are fantastic. Um, Barry Doxy, hi. You know, those eye muffs are but better. They are orange. Love them. Ah, uh, wow. So they fog up when you wear it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm... Um, 
I don't wear a dust mask uh, with my eye muffs. I wear, uh, it's an area where I'm not using a dust mask. Uh, when, I, when I'm using a dust mask, I've got the respirator because I've got this beard and, and dust masks tend to, um, I lose, lose uh, the seal because the beard holds the, the um, dust mask proud. So that's why I've got the, the alien helmet thing that I wear. Uh, but I guess I could wear a little tiny powered dust mask and give that a shot. But, you know, your call. I don't think it's a massive thing. Uh, where are we? Uh, hello, everyone from Quebec, from Gillies. Jason, this guy here in Queensland would love them, Dave. <laughs> okay, Jason. Uh, Papa Mo, hello, Mr. Sant, again from Nazareth. Jim, hello. Steve Wardley, hey, from uh, UK. Just gone midnight. Paul, morning, Dave. Been a while since my last visit to your live show. Apologies, I'll head to the corner. Uh, Ken Wills, good morning, good morning. Um, I joined up as a patron. Yes, thank you very much for that, Ken. Anyone else who wants to jump in like Ken did? Terrific. It's your call. Uh, the support is very much appreciated. Um, where are we up to? Michael, Christopher, morning, everyone from Adelaide. Well done, Ken. John Parrick, they've, no, they can't fog up, not over your nose and seal around your eyes. Okay. Bill from uh, Oxford, Carl, thumbs up. Dave, only 17 uh, right now. Yeah, look, if you can give me a thumbs up, it's that like button underneath. Not a thumbs up down the side here in the chat, but if down the bottom, in, as I say, there'll be a little thing where it says like, um, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Hit all those, that's fine. <laughs> um, look, I've got to get back into it. Let's, let's have a look at what we're going to be doing. So thinking about the Domino uh, 700 or the 500, this is the 700. It's a heavy machine. And I've got some hacks that are going, I'm going to show you a couple of hacks that if you want to use all of the, let me show you this, all of the smaller cutters, which are the four, five, six, eight, and 10 millimeter cutters with the, um, that the 500 works on. There's an adapter for this. And also I'm going to show you another little hack. Hence, I've got the uh, thickness of setup here ready to go and I'm going to make an adapting plate and I'm going to show you using the VIX bit and Euro screws how we can get past having a minimum, uh, minimum thickness board. So I can actually put four millimeter dominoes into the 10 millimeter or, or, or even eight millimeter thick timber using the 700 and you can't do that off the bat. So I'll show you how to do that in a very easy way. Um, Okay, 111 and 40, 111 people. Uh, you got a 500 yesterday, did you, Barry? Good on you. What's the next thing? Uh, orders are rolling in for the Stanton bench. It's just been amazing. As I said, if you want to grab one, uh, I'm madly producing them here in Australia. And also I've got uh, Luke over in the States. He's producing them there as well for me, which, you know, and we'll, as I say, we'll supply out to Canada as well. Uh, I'm looking for a producer in the UK, uh, so if you know anyone that's, uh, that's interested in doing that and uh, they're an honest and reliable person, by all means, flick me an email. Ah, oh, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Andrew's just done a super chat. Thank you. That's much appreciated. Um, I've got to shoot off early today, so the show's only going to go for another 20 minutes. So you only got to put up with me for a short while. Um, the reason being, it's my mother's 90th birthday. So, you yeah, know... Round of applause for mum. Uh, we're having a big family lunch for her and uh, it'll be great. So she's doing really well for someone who's 90. She still gets around. She uses one of those walking frame things. Got wheels and off she goes and little brakes. And anyway, so that's why I've got to shoot out early. Um, the winner of the uh, CMT drills, Brad Point drills, I will announce. And also the Vixbit which is this guy here in the drill. I'm going to use that in a minute. So that'll be sent out. And thank you to Carbotech for supplying those. It's, uh, it's great. Um, garage door insulation is very effective. Now, you know that in, in uh, Australia it's summer and it's two days into summer already and it's starting to get warm. Now, I'll show you here. This is the... I've got one of those indoor-outdoor thermometers. And that's in Fahrenheit for everyone around the world. And uh, so you'll see 82 degrees outside, 69 degrees inside. And it's just on the, it's a magnetic and it sticks to the, um, 
to the frame and there's the insulation beside it and that's in uh, in celsius so i'm very happy with 21 degrees vicky and i when we were on the tools we used to like 17 to 21 degrees celsius it was a very nice temperature to work in uh, back to here and back to there as well thanks for everyone who's throwing in some um, congratulations and a happy birthday for my mum that's uh, much appreciated i'll tell her i might have to tell her a couple of times <laughs> <laughs> no, she's pretty good with the memory. She, her short-term memory is not great, but I'll tell you what, she can tell me things from when she was a kid and it's the sharpest attack. Well, I don't know that it's true because, you know, she might be making it all up. I wasn't there. I came along later on. Anyway, what's the other thing? Um, into it, photos from where you're watching or projects you're building in your shop. Okay, Patreons, as I say, all my normal patrons that I, that I call their name out. And as I say, uh, Ken Wills has jumped in as well and become a patron in that tier. All right, let's have a look what we're going to do here. Oh, next week, next week, I might talk about this bad boy. Now, do you know what that is? That is a Torquata or Torquata flat top blade. Now, I've had a lot of people ask me about these things. So I got in touch with Timbercon and they've sent one over to me. Now, this is a flat top blade and it is six millimeters. Neat. So I've yet to test it. I've only just got it out of the box so I can show you. And I think Carbotech is also going to stock it. And also, I think Carbotech have decided to stock the Torquetta Dado stack as well, which, in my opinion, is the superior one to the CMT. They're both different purposes. Okay, now, what are we doing first? Let me grab these. This little bundle I have, and I'll go to, uh, uh, where are we, 30, going to be 38 degrees Celsius today. Wow. Um, if it happened more than 33 minutes ago, you don't remember. You know, I'm starting to get a bit like that as well. I'm going to go to Carl Camp, and we've got Carl back on board, and there we go. And also, I've got the image sharper this week because I played around with some of the settings and I think Carl Cam is going to work very well. So welcome back, Carl. He's been away for a couple of weeks. Now see this here. This may look kind of lame to you guys, but this is a spacer that I've made and it fits under here. Now there's a thing called a dummy plate. Uh, I've made my own version of that. So that fits on there and it packs down and it was to a set thickness for a set job that I was working on. But then I thought to myself, I might be a little bit smarter than that. I'm going to go to close up cam so I can show you a couple of things. I don't know if you can see it, but just here, is it going to come up? Let me put my hand over other things so I can't see anything else. See those numbers there? 10 through to whatever. That's the depth. So my plan was to make a plate that is 10 millimeters thick. Now this is just melamine on purpose. It's a nice hard surface. And the rest of, it, rest of it I've sealed with a product in Australia called Estopol. So it doesn't expand and contract. And you'll see there's three holes there. Now that, if I hold it up there, that'd be a bit easier. There you go. So Stephen, off to the corner for you. Okay. Now. Uh, if I hold this up, it might work better. Maybe Ugh, too high for me to hold up all the time. All right, so that is, it's a set of steps, 10 millimeters, 20, 25, 30, 40 millimeters. Now, my whole thing with this is I want to be able to use my tiny, tiny four millimeter dominoes, which are those little guys, in a machine that's designed to run the big fellows. Okay? So, we're going to do that with two methods. We're going to do it via using this, and that is what's called a Seneca adapter. It's an RTS 500. Now, these things convert the domino into being able to use all of the small cutters designed, it converts the 500 to be able to use all of the small cutters which are designed for the 500. 
Oh, the other direction. There we go. Cool. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to rush it along today so that we can get everything happening. Um, okay. Now, let me think about where I'm at. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to make something like this uh, and, and attach it. Now, I'm not going to actually shape it at all. I'm just going to knock, knock it up. I'll go to this one there. That might be a little bit easier again. And I'm going to swing this camera around here. Okay, this is my thickness planer. Can you all see that okay? Now with this thickness planer, this is 16 millimeter or 5 8 close enough to melamine hard at both sides. And just here is a little sensor. So I'm going to lower the head until it starts touching that sensor. Now I've got it in at an angle there because there's anti-kickback coils under there that will grab hold of the timber and won't let it come back. So I've got it right in the middle and you'll see just here that will start to go up in a second. Okay. And that tells me how much I'm going to take off in a pass. So I'm going to take one millimeter. This might be a little noisy, so you may want to turn the sound down. And I'm looking for the eye muffs. Where did I put them? There they are. You may want to turn the sound down. I've got to turn my dust extractor on first. These are great. Where's my remote for the dusty? You know what? I thought I had everything ready. Ah, oh, it is. It's right beside there. I'm an idiot. Here we go. Turn that on. Here it's sucking. That's amazing. All right. Turn the machine on. Lock the head. My first pass. Unlock the head. Get my calipers out. So it hits zero. We'll see what we've got. 15.58. Pop him back in there. I'll take about that much off. Unlock. More noise.
Okay, I'm off. I'll return this to here. And okay, now I have a board that is hard faced on hard faced on one side, and on the other side, it's ready for me to do some cleaning up on. So I can now get my Vix bit. Let's flip this over like so and pop her on yeah like that so i'm just i'm just going to lay it on top of there i might switch over cameras again to carl cam and chat and transition there we go so all i've done is i've got the board i am not i haven't trimmed it down in length at all yet and you know i keep telling people how to fix snipe on these little uh, benchtop machines and it's so easy there's, there's, there's no snipe on that. There's none. It's just beautiful. Alrighty. Uh, flip her over. So now what I've done is I've made a spacer that's 10 millimeters thick. And down here, all I have to do now is if it's on 10, it's going to actually be on zero. If it's on 20, it'll be on 10. How are we going to put it on there? With the Vix bit. There we go. I'll switch cameras to the main camera. It might be easier there. Sorry, Carl, you're going to be put to the side, transition. There we go. All right. So here I have the board. Actually, I think it's probably going to be better with Carl Cam. <laughs> Carl Cam. Actually, what might be best, I've got a couple of minutes, got a few minutes left. Let's swing that camera around to there and go to close-up camera again here yeah that might be fine there we go so now i have i'll bring it over here a little bit closer so you can see what's happening there's the domino you can see that all right can't you guys here you go i'm going to drill down the other side nearly stuffed up with the melamine side down because it's the side that's going to get the, the abuse and I'm going to put one in the center without my finger getting in the way. Let me turn it sideways so you can see exactly where I'm going. See these little indicator holes here in the 700? I'm going to put a hole right in the center of that. Done. Done. And done. Only a little bit. Now I can take those out. And I have these tiny, tiny three holes. One, two, three. I'm going to open those up with a four millimeter. Mm. Let's open. It. Let's move that guy out of the way. A four millimeter Brad Point drill. Pop it in. Sorry, I'm not joining in the chat much, guys. And I'm going to find out where those holes were, which is right there. Bring that back a touch. Actually, let's put it there and tip that down. Oop, I love this camera. There we go. All right, so there's the hole. There. So I can go all the way through. And on the other side, I've got a bit of blowout, but you know what? I also have over here somewhere. Where is it? I've probably lost it. Yeah, it's not there right at the moment. I'm not, not going to go hunting for it. A little uh, through hole countersink, and that works great. Switch back to the main camera, which is there. You'll send me a dominant. You'll make the plate, will you, Stephen? <laughs> I like them being made out. I like to make my own things. I'm, it's just me. So there we go. I've got that, and then I've got the Euro screws, which are in here. So I keep, I've got a little container I keep the screws in. And I want a screwdriver. 
Give me a sec. Screwdriver here. Pop this on here. So, drop that into there. I'll switch over cameras at the risk of uh, getting it wrong. There, transition, there we go. So there's the screw there. That's, that's locked in, these screws are fantastic. close-up cam as well because that's going to be a little bit easier bring it over oh, David. <laughs> you know what's happened there don't you I've lost one of the screws it's just gone taking off uh, no. that one's going to be a magnet job I've lost it anyway I'll do a close-up so you can see where they are there's going to be one more screw in there it's holding the plate perfectly I've now spaced it, so 10 millimeters is going to be actually pretty much spot on. Let's drop that down. I think I've got it sitting too high on there. There we go. That's all right, so if it's uh, 10 millimeters there, if I go to 20, let me have a look at that and raise it up. I'm just doing a quick couple of sums here while I'm thinking. Ah, I know what's happened. I know what's happened. I know what's happened. I've come in too close. That's why it wasn't working. I've brought it in a little bit too close. So I need to just shave the back off this because it's catching. It's catching just on here. On the other one I made, I created a chamfer at that point. See that? And that allowed everything, and this scallop here was also for two purposes. So I could read through the window and actually see what was happening underneath. There you go, look, that's it. Done, done. Wouldn't hide the piece you want. Okay, yes, so hence, Hence, I made that. I did that scallop out. So it works okay. Um, as I said, it's been a super quick show today, guys. Uh, I'm going to have to scoot. <laughs> Otherwise, Mum's going to say, David, where are you? Um, back here and back up there. Yes. So, yes, you were dead right. With the, without the um, When you cover the window, you can't see what you're doing. But as I said, I created that little area there which is where the window was, and I could see straight through it. Um, Gary, having the handy glass on the outside, I can raise and lower without misplacing them. Exactly right. The, the, the eye masks are terrific. Who won the competition? That's the next question. We're getting through this, aren't we? <laughs> Quick trick. 11.29. I'm nearly there, nearly there. Um, okay, let me see. What have we got here? Um, I've asked the question, though, how do you find the center? Uh, I've got to use a Brad point or invite my grandson over to find the mark. <laughs> I like that one, but it didn't win. Sorry about that. That was from Paul. Uh, use a center punch, uh, Vix bit center punch, all or just by eye. It's all done with magic, apparent, according to Alex. Um, what else we got? Uh, 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 Brett Guthrie. Brett Guthrie, I should say, with a Vix bit. However, on metal, I use the Veritas Optical Center Punch. I don't think they're making the Veritas Optical Center Punch anymore, which is a shame because it was a lovely item. Uh, okay, so the winner with a Vix bit, of course, was sent in by Jeremy. Now, Jeremy hasn't given me his surname, but I do have his email. I'll flick that off to him later on tonight, my time, which is going to be about another five hours away. And, of course, that was in Australia. The And that's thank you very much to Carbotech, because that's what... Jeremy has won a Vixbit and the CMT Brad Point drill bit set, which was three millimeters to ten millimeters. 
The plans for the Stanton Bench Mark II are up on my um, Etsy site, and by all means, if you want one to uh, that's already built, we can do that now. If you want the plans only, that's fine. We've converted the plans as well to Imperial, but it's not fractions, it's Imperial Decimal. The program that John was using to muck around with it um, isn't really going to do it. I guess we could do a three quarter inch with, um, you know, 96 uh, centers, but it's, it's, uh, it's a possibility. It's a possibility, but you won't be able to use any of John's accessories with it. Uh, the legs, however, will still work um, if you do 20 millimeter holes and you'd know exactly what I'm talking about if, if you got the plans. Um, next week, Yes, this oh, sorry, this week the competitions for the G6 IMUS. The following week, we've got a pretty big prize for Australia only. And you'll have to come back for me to let you know what that one is. And 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 the Torquetta um, six millimeter flat top blade, which is ideal for box joints. So it's an individual blade, and I think you can rip and cut with it, cross cut. I will check all that out. I'll get all that stuff done. I'll have a quick read down through here. Uh, everybody have a great day, Dave. Happy birthday to your mum. Thanks, Dave. Um, Glenn, um, Carl, to celebrate your mum's birthday, we can talk amongst ourselves. Of course you can. Um, Steve, thanks, Dave, for another great show and have a great time with your family. Collector's item one in the man cave. Paul Mumford, great show, Dave. Enjoy the celebrations. Go be a winner. Winner chicken dinner. Um, Stephen, always a good show. Email you the address. Not a problem at all. Thanks a lot. And I shall see everyone later when I get this one happening here. Indeed it is. Thanks for watching. Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. See you next week.